Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. You know, it must be hard being Jewish. I mean, I don't want to make an assumption about a pain a group of people I don't represent is going through, but it's gotta be hard. Not because of the years of oppression, not because there's still prejudiced jerk-offs out there, but because around the holidays, for all the well-known Christmas movies that exist, you only have one well-known Hanukkah movie. And sadly, it's brought to you by Beelzebub's foreskin himself, Adam Sandler. Yep, we have Jimmy Stewart finding the will to live again, you have Adam Sandler humping a car. We have Ebenezer Scrooge donating to the cold and hungry, you have deer eating shit. We have Charlie Brown realizing the importance of loving thy neighbor, you have Rob Schneider playing a stereotype so racist that Asians will be praying for the good old days of Mickey Rooney and squinty eyes and buck teeth. I never knew the hardships that your people had to go through. I never knew the turmoil that you had to get past. I never knew the pain that you were suffering through. Until I realized that this asshat is the cinematic face of your beloved holiday. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. It especially sucks because it comes from a person who I think can be funny, and yet he constantly shits on the face of good comedy. Sandler can be entertaining, he's a good songwriter, a decent actor, and can even make a funny movie every once in a while. But why does he have to destroy the talents of good artists, clever performers, and a beautiful 2D animation department so desperate for a hit that they actually thought the guy who bombed Lil Nicky would be their salvation? People, I'm not gonna lie. This is a hard one. No matter what holiday you celebrate, this is one of the hardest movies you will ever have to get through. So the film opens with a Rob Schneider narration. Good start. He tells us about Davy, played by Adam Sandler, and how everyone around Hanukkah time is happy except for him. Which is ironic, as during most viewings of his movies, Adam Sandler is the only happy one, and everybody else is miserable. The head honcho of Holiday Humbug lives right here in little old Dukesbury. And that fool is sitting inside the China Dragon, coming up with his own way of feeling tingly all over. <laughs> Oh, Scorpion born in five minutes? That's gotta be a restaurant record. And like I said before, that is Rob Schneider, also as the Chinese restaurant owner. I am the real Kuriste Yamaguchi. He no pay for his four Scorpion board! Sorry! That one caught me by surprise. I would make a joke about Rob Schneider playing yet another racially insensitive stereotype, but I have a theory that the more I believe Rob Schneider doesn't exist, the more possible it could be that it might actually one day happen. So, until further notice, what Rob Schneider racially insensitive stereotype? I don't see a Rob Schneider racially insensitive stereotype. Hope you're not planning on driving tonight, Stone. Oh no, officer. I'm just gonna say goodnight to my car, then walk home and enjoy the holiday decorations. Oh, mama, you like it when I hold you like this? Cause I'll do it all night long. <sighs> You may notice too in this film that the animation is surprisingly really, really good. In fact, it's insultingly good. Like, what the hell are these beautiful colors, excellent line work, and graceful movements doing in a story from the mind of Hollywood's abandoned pregnancy it wishes it had? And ironically, this works against the film. Because the animation is so good, it doesn't match the tone at all. In a much better animated Sandler film, Hotel Transylvania, the high-speed energy and quick pace matches the comedic delivery perfectly. Here, the animation is much slower and closer to real life. So the characters don't move like funny animated characters, they move like constipated baby elephants not being allowed to express themselves the way an animated character should. In fact, the real fucking irony is, there's no reason to animate this story! Yeah, when you watch it all the way through, it's pretty pointless. The budget probably would've been the same if not cheaper if it was live action. So why do it? Was the idea that they knew this shit wasn't gonna be watchable in three dimensions so they figure a drawing of the same shit would somehow make it better? If Leonardo da Vinci drew a picture of Cat Dennings not being funny, it'd still be Cat Dennings not being funny. He sip and skip me! What? He no pay for his four scorpion board! Oh boy. Let's go! So Davey runs away from the police after not paying his bill and gets arrested. But he's in good hands, as thankfully the judge likes spewing exposition more than he does actually sentencing people. I've sent you to reform school, the drunk tank, the local psychiatric ward, because you used to be a good kid, playing ball for the Jewish Community Center with the best jump shot this town's ever seen. What an odd thing to say. I still got a pretty good jump shot, let me show you. 
I'd hit a three-pointer for you, except I'd have to drop my pants and pop a thumb up my boo-boo. Oh, 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 charming. Destined to become a classic holiday line. God bless us, everyone. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. I'd have to drop my pants and pop a thumb up my boo-boo. Dickens himself could not write better! Just as he's about to lay down some much-welcome jail time, a man named Whitey intervenes. Whitey. We went over this two months ago. It's your last year of refereeing the youth league basketball. You're turning 70 years old, and our insurance company says they won't cover you anymore. Jesus, guy, do you have any lines not telling somebody else's backstory? Whitey, you're as hard to figure out as the origin of my tie. Which, of course, started to be worn in Europe during the Thirty Years' War. What? You don't know what the Thirty Years' War is? Well, I'll start from the beginning. Years ago, the Earth was a molten mass. Whitey, if you want to work with this punk, then God bless you. But Mr. Stone, what Whitey says goes. So Whitey offers to look after him as a referee in training. The performance of this white-haired little old man is voiced by... I knew this young man years ago when his moral fiber was still intact. Well, gee, it could be anyone. I mean, I don't have a clue. Maybe Sandler heard some angelic voice thespian from the Shakespearean theater and said, He must be one of my leading stars. So Whitey shows him the ropes as referee and also reveals that he's hoping to win the Patch Award, the highest honor the town hands out. But that won't help much as Davey, big shock, is an asshole to everybody. Foul on this kid for eating everything in sight. Huh? Jelly jugs, next time you come on my court, you better wear a bra, okay? <laughs> You know how with the Grinch you kind of love to hate him? Well, Adam Sandler movies are worse than cancer. Yeah, I have no joke there. It just feels fucking good to say how much I hate Adam Sandler movies. Good to see you still got those circus feet. Men's 11 right foot, children's 9 left foot. Yuck. Now I assume you've done your- Really is incredible hearing these two completely different voices talk to each other, isn't it? It's about as impressive as Christopher Walken voicing all the characters on Popeye. Olive oil, let's say you and I have sex and stuff. Olive oil, I also want to bang you. Oh dear! Well, I got a thing for elephant man syndrome, so I guess I'll choose you. Me? Okay, well, I'm gonna do this weird thing where I'm naked and then suddenly I'm not. Blow! You just never know it was him the whole time. So Whitey feels a good way to get his attitude up is to take him to the mall. You need to clean your brain out, pal. And to me, the mall is the best place to do that. So what's good about this place? Product placement! No, I'm not even kidding. We let our sponsors do us like backdoor whores. Look at some of these! The Body Shop, the Thai Rack, GNC, Radio Shack, Petland for a Catatope, Spencer's Gift for some fake dog do, some Barrows talking Donuts, they're simply the best. And don't forget the orange chicken at Panda Express. Oh my god! Baby, I'm so sorry. I mean, I thought your product placement was the worst, but after seeing this... You go and be subtle, I'm gonna suffer through the rest of this. So, what's the only thing worse than listening to Whitey's door nail in your brain voice? How about if he sings with that door nail in your brain voice? Everyone in town will be looking their best When you feel nearly five foot three. And there went my eardrums! I should be sad, but I'm just happy I don't have to listen to Adam Sandler anymore! Ah, oh, that's nice. Can you take me home now? The great irony to how obnoxious Whitey's voice is is that Sandler does another voice as Whitey's sister who lives with him. And, surprisingly, is not that bad at it. You hope I'm gonna bring my wig back! I know it was you! Mister, if you're gonna kill us, take off your wet shoes! They're soaking the carpet! Oh my god, why couldn't this be the character he interacts with? I mean, she's annoying, but she's much less annoying and actually sounds like a different person, at least. Why didn't they just go with her? Well, maybe because she wouldn't be nearly as funny being needlessly shoved down a porta potty and climbing out covered in poo. You know, for a movie obviously trying to make Adam Sandler's character look like Adam Sandler, I don't think that's what he looks like with his shirt off. Can we get visual confirmation on that? There we go! Slight artistic liberties. So of course they win and the guy eats a jockstrap. 
So as Davy and Jennifer drive themselves home, there actually is a nice song about how Jessica and Davy used to be young and, well, had a decent childhood. Well, over there's my family home And the woods we used to run But guess whose voice constantly ruins it? Back when he was nice Before my warm heart turned to ice My sister's wig once had life Fuck me, guy! Even Gollum with his annoying voice would be like Crossed, buddy! You're killing Hanukkah! The only time I had sex was on the phone but Jockstrap Guy gets his revenge later by burning down Davy's house. You'll stay with me and my sister for a while. I ain't living with you buffoons. What other options do you got, Mr. Rockefeller? You mean between freezing to death outside and listening to your voice? Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Here's to you guys for letting me crash over. This is never gonna work! It'll work, we just need to set some ground rules so Davy knows how we do things around here. Well, let's see, we've literally just gone three minutes. How about another testicle stabbing song? If you're coming from the street with dirty shoes on your feet, that's a technical foul. Yeah, I'm sure this is one of those songs that Sandler just couldn't fit onto one of his albums, so what the hell? Might as well waste about a dozen Korean animators on it. There are certain rules which apply in one's life with your sister. Jesus fuck! <laughs> Try something. Oh my god. That's, that's so much better. I I can just look at the beautiful animation and not listen to dialogue from writers that were juggled as babies. In fact, I can just imagine my own story to make this one even better. Hey, Awesome Claus, what did you do today? Well, I made Christmas a whole lot more awesome this year. Really? And how did you do that? Well, I kicked Ron Howard in the balls for making the Grinch, shot every greedy fuckass who went shopping on Thanksgiving night, and produced eight Hanukkah movies that were actually funny to people who can count past the number four. Wow, I think my balls just grew while talking to you. It's all part of spending millions of dollars to animate something that actually makes an impact on somebody's life. I'm Awesome Claus. So here's a fun question. What's even more pathetic than having your cast full of unfunny and unlikable characters? Having a serious death scene acted out by a cast of unfunny and unlikable characters. Yeah, uh-huh. They go that route. They actually give Davy a backstory involving his parents dying in a car accident. And of course, this is the reason he's such a jerk to everyone. Yeah, because a movie with shit-eating deer, three-breasted women, and an extreme close-up on hairy white asses clearly can segue so easily into heavy drama like this. He basically shut down. I don't, I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. My parents are dead. Happy Hanukkah. Now leave me alone. <laughs> ah, yes. And Eleanor's cry snorting makes the scene even more powerful. Jesus, fuck, what do they do for an encore? Read the diary of Anne Frank? Despite everything, I believe people are good at heart. <laughs> Quiet, Eleanor, you're ruining the weight of my incredibly dramatic voice. <laughs> this, of course, puts Davy in a bad mood again and causes him to rebel. Did you read anything about a deformed referee who spends 35 years trying to win some stupid patch so he can pretend people actually like him? They have an award for the freakiest looking fraternal twins who no one even gives a crap about. You two are definitely winning. And you're bald! You're not welcome in my house! Good, your house sucks! And you know, just as a testament to how fucking bad this movie really is, even with the backstory that his parents were killed when he was young, they still make him too unlikable to sympathize with. Even the Grinch narrator would be like, And given the choice between the two of you, I choose the, uh... Oh, hell no, I'm going with the green guy. Or at least he didn't make Jack and Jill. That movie was shit! Wow. Just when you started to really like Davy. Was that what we were supposed to be doing? He goes and has a butthole relapse. Well, as you heard it put so eloquently, he breaks into a mall going on another rampage. Ooh, does this mean we possibly get even more product placements? Oh hell, 
Why don't we just have the product placements come to life and save the day? Everybody wake up. This is not a rehearsal. Roger on that. Let's do this, people. Wake up, kids. Our hot and sour friend is here. We're coming, we're coming. We, we all heard what happened at the skating rink today. <sighs> so... Thanks to the biggest cinematic corporate orgy since Food Fight, Davy opens up and finally cries over the loss of his parents. This doesn't mean much, though, as some cops bust him for breaking and entering. Save your sorries for the judge. But thankfully, Sandler's super athletic body also has lightning fast reflexes and he outwits the cops. <laughs> Nothing takes down the double chin with the Jacob style abs! But they find out at the banquet that night that Whitey didn't win the patch award. Aw, oh, what a shame. He was such a nice guy, too. I mean, this is the man who so selflessly left after his award he didn't win was announced. This award was for humbleness, right? But it's okay, because Davey has another annoying song to sing. I was such a shithead, but he never quit on me. Except for that part where he said you weren't welcome into his house anymore, but why bring any part of brain activity into this movie now? This inspires the crowd who we established a moment ago only has a few Jewish people in it to randomly do a Jewish dance. If this were a good film. So everybody meets up with Whitey at the mall, they hand him the award, and the moment is so touching that even Davy's hallucinations start crying. Seriously, is he imagining that or what? Any chance we can end with the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Thanks. The credits start to roll and I'm blown out of my ass to discover that four people wrote this piece of shit. Four people? How the flying fuck do you think that process worked? Duh, we make movies! We make movies! We make movies! This is not only one of the worst holiday specials ever made, this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Period. I cannot believe how unfunny it is. Sandler's voice acting is probably the worst I've ever heard in my life, and the movie couldn't even keep its mean-spirited tone. In a strange way, I could at least have a touch of respect if it was meant to be unlikable from beginning to end. But no, they fit in this emotional bullshit that they actually think is gonna make you feel that special holiday feeling. Seriously, guys? After this? <laughs> holiday feeling I got from this is similar to when I puke from drinking too much eggnog. Fuck this movie. <laughs>